Hello, and welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Standley, coming to you from a very wet Deer Lodge, Montana. And this is a story about the Milwaukee Road. In August of 2023, we were on a long cross-country trip. As I said in our first video, one of our great interests is the World Science Fiction Convention. When this convention is somewhere other than in North America, they hold a special extra convention, so we were returning from having attended the North American Science Fiction Convention that was held in Winnipeg, Manitoba. For this trip, we had wanted very much to make it a train trip, but we could not work out a practical way to make it by train. Well, we decided that if we had to drive, we might as well make a few stops along the way. Many of these stops were rail-related, thus giving us the chance to see some things that we thought we might share. On our trip, we made a brief stop in Deer Lodge, Montana. So what's the big deal about Deer Lodge? Here is the funny part. While planning our road trip, like many others, we used Google Maps to work out a route. Lisa was looking over my shoulder and asked for a street view at various places. I was plunking down street view almost at random along our route, and during one of these she yelped, Hey, go back! Looking back over the area, we spotted this. A Milwaukee Road electric locomotive. We both thought this is a place we needed to stop and examine more closely. On our return trip from Winnipeg, we were somewhat pressed for time and could only spend an hour or two here. And on top of that, it was a very rainy day. So here is our short and somewhat wet look of at least part of a day at Deer Lodge. In 1847, a railway by the name of the Milwaukee and Waukesha Railroad was incorporated. Within three years, it had its first trains running between Milwaukee and Wauwatosa. In 1874, the company changed its name to the Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Paul. By 1887, the railroad had lines stretching out to Iowa, South Dakota, and to Kansas City, as well as reaching Upper Michigan. In 1909, the lines in South Dakota had been extended and they built to the west as far as Seattle, Tacoma, and the railroad later changed its name to the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul, and Pacific, better known as the Milwaukee Road. While not the first or even the second to have a transcontinental railroad, the Milwaukee Road was one of the well-known names in Western railroading. Deer Lodge was once the location of a large maintenance center and division headquarters for the Milwaukee Road. We can see that at one time there were extensive shops and other facilities for maintenance. As the line started in the days of steam, there was a turntable for turning the engines. What is not often thought of is that there was a need to turn many of their electric locomotives as well. For powering the electrics on the turntable, as there was no overhead wire, they simply used a long extension cord. Today you can see a tiny bit of the equipment that at one time was the pride of the Milwaukee Road. This engine, or more properly motor, is a 2D plus D2 electric, best known as a Little Joe. This name came about as these locos had originally been built by General Electric for sale to the Soviet railways in the period just after World War II and was a reference to Soviet leader Joseph Stalin. Uh, let's just say that in the post-war period there were increased political tensions between the Soviet Union and the USA. While GE had completed the 20 units that had been ordered, Due to changes in world outlook, they could no longer export them to the USSR. So what were they to do? They needed to look elsewhere to sell them. There were two major problems in selling them to anyone else. First of all, 14 units had already been constructed to the then Russian rail gauge of 1,524 millimeters. 
the last six of the order of 20 had only been partially completed. The second problem is that they had been set up to use the planned 750 to 3300 volt direct current overhead power system. Few mainline railroads used such overhead power in North America. At first, things did not look very promising. Ah, but luck seemed to come GE's way. While there were not many electric rail operations in the U.S. at the time, the Milwaukee Road came forward and offered to buy all 20 locomotives and any spare parts. They were willing to go as high as $1 million for the lot. Well, General Electric was not too happy at this price, as it was about the same as the scrap value, but it was a lot better than getting nothing. So they decided to make the deal. But then the Milwaukee Road did not actually send the money, so GE went looking to see if anybody else might want to buy the Locos. By the time the Milwaukee Road had worked out some money issues and come back to GE, they found out that other railways wanted some new locomotives, so in 1949, the Chicago South Shore and South Bend Railroad picked up three of these powerful electric locomotives. The South Shore operated a line from Chicago, Illinois to South Bend, Indiana. We will come back and talk of them another day. Another five went to the Campiana Paulista de Estradas de Ferro of Brazil, which regaged them to 1600 millimeters. So when the Milwaukee Road finally found their checkbook, they came back and bought the remaining 12 units and still paid $1 million for the lot. They were then given the designation class EF4, but almost everyone called them Little Joes. Their new owners had some trouble at first with their new charges. While GE had regaged the units to 1435 millimeters for North America, there was still one problem. All the controls were labeled in Cyrillic. The units had been fitted with two cabs, as you can see. The railroad did not really want the second cab, so its controls were removed and a steam generator was fitted in its place. Yes, I did say that. A steam generator is really nothing more than a steam boiler. At that time, when pulling a passenger train, the cars needed steam for heating and other services. Additionally, they had to be fitted out so they could be run in multiple unit operation. There were many times when both a straight electric and a diesel electric locomotive would work together. The last electric freight arrived in Deer Lodge on 15 June 1974. The Milwaukee Road then pulled down its wires and only the diesels were left to run. At Deer Lodge, you can also see this E9 diesel electric locomotive that once pulled prestigious passenger trains with names like the Pioneer Limited or the Hiawatha. Other times they were used to pull many a typical freight train. One other bit of rail equipment that should be on almost anyone's list is this caboose. It is great that you are allowed in to look around and see what it might have been like to ride aboard one. For our day, it was also nice to be out of the rain, which was pretty heavy while we were there. There is also a large indoor museum with many other artifacts and exhibits, but we had but a brief peek inside before we simply ran out of time. We really do recommend a visit here, and if we are ever back in this part of the country, we hope to be able to stop by again. We hope you've enjoyed this story of the Milwaukee Road. And until next time, we'll see you on the train. But unless we can find some way to get some juice to make it run, probably not this one.